We have like six bags back there ready to go. So, and it's my last couple hours in Miami. Oh. I gotta leave my friend JC. We got a blast. Back, back to the cold. You know? day in Miami, sunny South Florida, and having some good, good time with some great, great people in the hobby and the industry. And today the fun continues. We are heading to see Colin Ford. For anyone watching this video, write on the comments, how would you feel about a live stream of Polo Reef? Uh -oh. So guys, welcome. We're here at Coral Morphologic, here we with are. Colin Ford, doing some amazing things from a reef restoration standpoint, from an art standpoint, growing out some amazing corals that we're gonna show you. So my name is Colin Ford. I'm a marine biologist, a co-founder of Coral Morphologic, based here in Miami, Florida. I studied marine biology at the University of Miami, fell in love with the city, and growing corals here in the lab. I'm also equally involved in some of the research science that's taking place looking at the local corals here in Miami, including a population of corals we call the urban corals that are literally living alongside the highway. Coral Morphologic primarily is it does multimedia work and, and art and video. Check us out on Instagram, on YouTube, all the platforms, coralmorphologic.com. Uh, and then of course we have our Coral City camera, which is the live streaming camera. It's blown away even my uh, expectations. I knew that we were gonna see some cool stuff. I didn't realize we were gonna see 187 species of fish. Some days we'll see like 50 or more sharks that are that are swimming past the, the, the camera. We see manatees, sea turtles, seabirds. The amount of biological diversity that we have in our own backyard, I think is also something that's like really inspiring and, and, and something that I hope people locally that may not be divers are, are aware that we have these coral reef resources right here. But also it, it, it's a reminder of that there's still habitat that we need to protect. There's corals we need to protect. Miami. We call it the Coral City because you know it's literally built on an ancient coral reef. It's important that we're aware that literally the water is right at our doorstep and the corals are just kind of waiting to take over this artificial reef we've built from them. And this live stream is super cool. Literally like if you're jumping into the ocean yeah. and snorkeling. That's what it feels like. I've made a, about 30,000 video clips, all the different species that we that we see swimming past the camera, you know, with this idea that we're, you know, in the future we can program an AI to actually use these cameras, track changes in, in you know, the abundance of a certain species. Really this camera brought people together from around the world. We have people, yeah. you know, watching from Europe that, that, yeah. that had never been snorkeling here, didn't know a, a sergeant major from, a, a grouper and now you know they're 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 able to to, to identify 100 fish species at the same time the camera is a scientific instrument we've been able to do the world's first uh, one year time lapse of, of coral growth underwater This is an invaluable tool for, for education yeah. and institutions. So to be able to put this on in a classroom and show students to talk about the coral reefs and actually show them and, and yeah. see it live, like this is not a yeah. it's not a movie. I mean, it's kind of like this is there right now. This is like our little yellow magic school bus. And here in Miami, there's there's literally neighborhoods where where a lot of the kids never even go to the ocean. You know, this this is a real a, a great way to, to to bring it to everyone at a very low cost. You really see the fish acting really naturally. We just founded a, a nonprofit, the Coral City Foundation. The goal is to try and get Coral City Camera into the local public schools. I commend you for doing what you're doing, trying to bring this to the schools, bring this to the hospitals. And, and Coral Morphologic, our slogan is uh, human coral symbiosis. We kind of take the approach that the corals have been building these underwater cities for half a billion years. Maybe we can learn from them right. at sort of harmonious symbiotic living with, with, with nature and biodiversity, as opposed to sort of taking the approach that, oh, those poor corals, they're so helpless. We, we look at it the other way around. It's like, maybe they can save us. Really like what, what you're doing, Colin, with take some amazing macro shot. 
you have an artistic feel in how you put the corals together. Can you tell us about what you loosely projected out in Miami? Sure, yeah. So this year for Miami Art Week, we did our biggest project that we've ever done, where we grew corals on 3D printed models of the Performing Arts Center, the Art Center, filmed those in our studio, and then we projected those corals onto the building itself. Guys from Panasonic flew in. They said, this is the best projection we've ever seen. This is, I can't, couldn't believe that these were real animals and not some CGI thing. To see how far things have come, the work that Julian Sprung and others have been have been doing to help develop the products that we need to keep the corals alive, the lighting, the supplements, you know, this was all done by hobbyists. And now we're at a point where that, that technology can be transferred back to the scientists. Wait a minute, these corals that I study are, are, are every bit as beautiful. There was that moment where we realized, well, what is it that connects all of these countries? You know, core morphologic, as much as it is about reminding people, you know, these beautiful organisms, they're fluorescent, you know, they're practically aliens. We're all drawn to this unexplainable, beautiful, fluorescent Absolutely. creatures of which it's still a mystery. From my perspective as an artist, it would be a lot harder to get people to care about them if they didn't have these fluorescent colors. You've done a great job, by the way, Thank you. of injecting coral into, into just mainstream right. daily lives. You know, one of the cool things we're learning, there's, there's so many different ways where reef restoration is taking place. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, I'm the first person to ever use the term super coral because I discovered an Acropora living in government cut and appeared to be a hybrid between staghorn and elkhorn corals. You know, there's a concept in biology uh, called hybrid vigor. Mutts are, are usually healthier dogs than purebred dogs, right? So when I first was snorkeling along, I saw this coral, it just, it blew my mind. I was like, wait a minute, like, these corals shouldn't be growing here on a seawall in a commercial port. And that really changed my mind about where I should be looking for corals. Finding these enormous brain corals growing on the rocks that were literally put there just to hold the, the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this area that Colin is describing, it's not ideal conditions for corals to grow in. Yes. Water's warmer, there's pollution, yeah. runoff from, from the streets. They shouldn't even be there and yeah. they're thriving. Yes. Miami itself is like a living laboratory. And I realized that if you're trying to find the most hardy and resilient strains of corals, you need to go to the most extreme places where you wouldn't expect to find them. The populations of corals along the highway are healthier than they are offshore. It flips this idea that, you know, that corals are living in a place where you might not want to go swimming. You know, because of that, nobody had really been paying any attention to them, and we've been able to draw that attention. Um, had a lemon shark that just went past on the oh, camera. Oh, oh, oh. nice. Uh, the, the stream of the, we have the, watch the city here. I, I watch the camera all day long. I'm always, always paying attention. We're in addition to running the Coral City camera and getting that into schools. You know, we want to be able to map where all of these corals are and really sort of try and document as much as possible to contribute scientifically, because I think Miami really has like the, they are the original super corals, the OG. Florida reefs are suffering from stony uh, coral tissue log bodies. Yep. But these corals may have developed tolerance to the disease. I mean, you hit the nail on the head of like one of the big questions. Are these corals able to spawn under these bright lights that are right. they're brighter than the full moon? And we know the work that Jamie Craig's has, has done, yeah. that even just a little bit of light coming in at the wrong time can completely mess up, up the corals. So tell me about scale. You know, we think about this all the time. Problem, of course, is the is the funding. Spawning can be done in indoors in small labs like this. You can't take these baby corals and put them out onto the reef because they're going to get wiped out. They're going to get eaten by the parrotfish. So really, you need to, you need to grow a coral out to probably like a, at least two inches in diameter and to do it indoors under this blue LED light. It's a staging process. First, they need to go into a green outdoor greenhouse facility to get a, 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 a microbiome that's more more like what it is out in the ocean. If you can eliminate all those electrical costs you just let the corals do do what they what they do and let them grow that takes time but you know that's like anything in a grown in a greenhouse then bring them to a staging area like like what we have with the coral city camera it also puts them in a place where again it toughens them up from from that location you can bring them out to the reefs that need restoration Everything's got to be a team effort. Hobbyists can, can, can help, you know, in various different ways. The existence of the hobby itself has already accelerated all of these efforts to a degree that I don't think it would be possible to do what we're doing had Absolutely. there not been a hobby for all of this time to develop the equipment and the technique. All this reefing equipment that we use on the tanks, the lighting, the pumps, the reality is, is this is the same equipment that 
a lot of these coral restoration yeah. foundations are, 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 are using. Something as simple as donating equipment that you're not using anymore. We'll make sure to put links on uh, a few places that we visited and other places we think that need yeah. equipment. Reef Institute comes to mind, uh, Coral Morphologic, I'm sure they could always use some extra equipment. If you're in a local reef club, you know, and you have used equipment, old tanks, you know, get involved, see if there's a science teacher that, you know, might be interested in, in having a tank. You can teach math out of a book, but responsibility is really something yeah. that you have to get your hands right. wet. You guys could definitely help. Uh, this brings us to an end, Miami. We want to thank you so much, Colin, for oh, hosting us. My, 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 Colin. My, my pleasure, Jason. This place is awesome. Yeah. Well, we're going to show footage of all this stuff, but there is so much color and beautiful corals <laughs> here. It's literally, we walk in and we're like, awesome. Right. Cheers. Thanks, guys, for watching. And um, yeah, tune into the Coral City camera. Exactly. You better check that out. That thing's awesome. It's on YouTube. And what's the website again? Uh, CoralCityCamera.com and, of yep. course, CoralMorphologic.com uh, and all of the social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You catch us there.